Hello and good morning everyone. Now today we will be continuing our previous lecture. We were uh, we are on page uh, 137. Previously we have discussed about the Streptococcus species that is Streptococcus uh, bovis and Enterococci when which Enterococci uh, both are gamma hemolytic and Enterococci grow in 6.5% NACL whereas the Streptococcus bovis doesn't. Both are the actually they I realized the bile, bile is clean test positive, but they, uh, this intercoca only grow in the 6.5% NACL, whereas the streptococcus bovis doesn't. Now coming to the point, and we are revising uh, USMLE step 1, 2021, page 137, microbiological section. Uh, so now we are dealing with the bacillus anthrax. So you have to, you have to know that uh, actually bacillus is precious, bacillus has this is the gram positive bacilli there are very few we, once if you remember we have talked about the coccus are the mainly gram positive there are only few bacilli that are gram positive and among them although there are very few like bacillus cereus like bacillus anthrax bacillus cereus then clistridia then coronabacterium these are caused the important medically important and dangerous diseases so talking about the bacillus anthracis bacillus anthracis is actually a gram positive spore forming rod that produce anthrax toxin actually this produce the anthrax toxin if you remember in previously we, where we have talked about this uh, uh, let me go over there and I will explain about uh, this here we have talked about this gram positive bacilli and an and an aerobic organism it was a bacillus group but previously if you remember the toxin released by the this bacillus species then you have to remember over here this is the bacillus anthraxis which acts these are the exotoxin and that was used acts by increasing the fluid secretion that is increased cyclic amp so you have to remember this point you have we need to correlate each and every uh, information so that there will be a scenario and we will able to answer that question so bacillus anthraxis actually and release the anthrax toxin that mimics the adrenal cyclase increase the cyclic amp and that likely responsible for a characteristic edematous border of the black scar in the cutaneous anthrax so we have to remember this bacillus anthrax produce the anthrax toxin and that acts by increasing the cyclic amp that is important now let's move and we'll go to our original place where we are revising our section uh, so okay so here we are so it was a gram positive spore forming rod that produced the anthrax toxin and exotoxins consist of protective antigen lethal factor and edema factor and has a polypeptide capsule there is another important point about the bacillus anthracis actually bacillus species we have to remember that every bacteria those have capsule are normally a polysaccharide I'll repeat again every bacteria this is important this is a US family or any um, multiple choice question so you have to remember this any all of the bacteria those have the capsule are polysaccharide in nature except this bacillus species that has the capsule that is a polypeptide in nature that is poly -decultamate. and this is because it is a unique it is an exception it makes it an important thing to ask in a exam point of view so so what we are talking it has a polypeptide capsule usually usually what we are what we are saying that all the bacteria have the capsule that is made of a polysaccharide polysaccharide not of the polypeptide only bacillus have the polypeptide capsule and that makes it unique so they say become important for exam point of view now colonies show a hello hello of a projection sometimes refer as a medusa head appearance so sometimes they make it told you told you not about the directly they will never tell you about the they are talking about bacillus anthrax they will tell you that uh, there are some organism that grow on the blood agar that has the medusa head appearance and found that uh, its capsule is made of polypeptide polysaccharide and you have to pick one of the answer and that is the polypeptide which is polydecultamate and that is the answer okay now talking about the cutaneous and pulmonary anthrax these are the disease caused by this uh, by bacteria this cutaneous anthrax is a painless papule surrounded by the vesicles also with the black scar painless and necrotic uncommonly progress to bacteria and death so in a skin infection when there is a cutaneous uh, this uh, anthrax develop they release toxin the toxin ca cause increased cyclic amp and cause edematous scar edematous area around this scar 
so that is always there but you have to also remember this doesn't progress this is a localized infection and a painless infection but necrosis is going on so this because of that you will see a black scar and edema is due to increased cyclic mp this has a toxin that increase cyclic mp and increase the fluid secretion around that so Cutaneous anthrax, the main important thing is they will make, might give you a picture and then uh, ask you to identify giving a scenario. And in that case, you have to remember a cutaneous lesion with a black scar that is necrotis with the edematous around it. They are talking about the cutaneous anthrax. Okay, so it is a painless papule surrounded by the vesicle, also with a black scar, painless and necrotic, uncommonly progress to the bacteremia. They are they are rarely progress to bacteremia and death. So they will not be going to ask you about that that patient develop death, and you have to think about the cutaneous anthrax never. Now coming to the pulmonary anthrax, pulmonary anthrax is the inhalation of the spore. There you have seen, uh, you have um, seen about the lot of the incidents like uh, some of the letter has been sent to the US president or some other high profile people and through that is, spore is transport, transport to that, uh, to, through that letter to the high profile people. And what happened if the spore is there, the spore can easily, they are very minute, they cannot be even seen in your eyes. Okay, you need to see um, through the magnification and if you open the letter that is spore you get inhale you can involve if you are directly involved in lettering in opening the letter now you, this is spore get inhaled once it get inhaled it enter inside your respiratory tract and now the pulmonary anthrax step up so inhalation of the spore most commonly from contaminated animals or animal product although also a potential bioopen why it is known as the bioopen because they can be this spore can be transport to kill someone to make sick severely sick to someone by transporting easily through this letter and other uh, procedure because this spore are hardly seen okay so they can be used as a potential bioopen and usually we have seen we have heard about this uh, letters that pulmonary anthrax the spores have been transported transported okay usually in nature they are actually inhalation of spore occur from the contaminated animal or animal product their animal and animal i'll say cow dung or say their wastes or animal uh, contact this will lead to the inhalation their surrounding area they are is releasing this spore and the, from that spore we mostly contaminated from animal or animal product although as a potential bio open one of the symptoms patient will develop they will develop like flu like symptoms that rapidly progress to fever, pulmonary hemorrhage, mediastinitis, CR, CX, uh, chest x-ray may show the widening of the mediastinum and so on. So once the patient inhale the spore, the bacteria, the spore will germinate into the bacteria, bacteria will release the toxin and then the, it will damage your pollen lungs. But what are the symptoms? Initially you will have a flu-like syndrome, then there will be a rapidly progress to the fever, patient develop fever, the pulmonary hemorrhage, then mediastinitis, there will be inflammation of the mediastinum, in x-ray we can see widening of the mediastinum and patient will develop salt. Okay, also called the Wool storage disease, this is the another name of this pulmonary anthrax, okay, prophylaxis with ciprofloxacin or doxycycline, doxycycline when exposed. So anyone who have now, suppose think that they had been exposed to this sport, then they should go prophylaxis with ciprofloxacin or doxycycline. If you are thinking that somebody has got uh, contact with this biological weapon or you, there is a suspect, someone high profile person come that I have read a letter and that later uh, I am suspecting that now I am having flu like symptoms. So I am suspecting that I have uh, this exposure to the pulmonary anthrax sport. You immediately admit that patient, start your antibiotics, ciprofloxacin or doxycycline and monitor in the issue because you may need to if they are already have the symptoms if not then you have to start the prophylaxis with ciprofloxacin or doxycycline now term, coming to the another species that is the uh, same the bacillus cereals the bacillus cereals is actually the same species bacillus one is anthrax and other is cereals but they are uh, usually causing cutaneous and pulmonary anthrax whereas this is responsible for food poisoning mainly so bacillus anthrax is a gram positive cause food poisoning uh, spore survive cooking rice reheated rice syndrome keep rice warm result in the germination of the spore and enterotoxin formation so we have to remember this is this scenario is like a person came into the restaurant they got they order the like uh, fried rice and once the the if the food is get infected with the bacillus they produce the spore once you hit it what happened the bacteria may get death but the spore doesn't 
spore doesn't kill or spore it survives cooking rice because even spore even if you are cooking the rice the spore will not be killed it will need for spore um, we, to get rid of this spore we need to use the temperature that autoclaving it needs a 121 degree celsius for 15 degrees 15 minutes so in a 15 pound square inch pressure so that will be not usually achieved while cooking the food or rice so spore survive and now if you have he reheated or if you are if the food is there the spore will now germinate into the bacteria they release the toxin and once you eat that food you reheated fried rice then you will develop the disease and usually this they are causing food poisoning so cause food poisoning spore survive cooking rice reheated syndrome called keeping rice form result in the germination of spore and enterotoxin formation Emetic type cause nausea and vomiting within one to four, five hours caused by cellulite a preformed toxin. So this is usually a toxin is already there. You have reheated although toxin has not been damaged because of that now what happened you when you ingest it the, the this toxin immediately enter inside your stomach that trigger the symptoms in yes uh, your enteric nervous system and cause the symptom like nausea this toxin will release the cause the symptom like nausea and vomiting once you develop this nausea and vomiting because because within one to five hours because these are very these are already preformed they will just enter inside your body and trigger the the symptoms caused by this, this uh, preformed toxin is now called cellulite diarrhea type cause watery non-bloody diarrhea and gi pain within eight to 18 hours management is supportive care antibiotic are ineffective against toxin so it is very simple look they, they are talking we are talking about the bacillus cereus bacillus cereus is a gram positive bacteria that release the toxin they have they are the spore forming bacteria so the spore are usually present in cooked this reheated rice they are usually survive there even after cooking and once they germinate they release the they convert into the spore convert into the bacteria and bacteria then release the toxin this toxin will easily present inside the food now if you are eating that food it goes inside your body and once it goes inside your body it will start within one to five hours nausea and vomiting and later in 8 to 18 hours they will develop the watery diarrhea non-bloody watery diarrhea this usually doesn't get resolved with the antibiotics because these are the toxin mediated not bacteria mediated it is not due to the bacteria it is the due to a toxin released by the bacteria so we are not giving antitoxin for this which are present in your GI tract. We, there is no any antitoxin that you need to ingest. So there will be a symptoms for uh, one days or two days and then it will easily get resolved, self-resolving. There is no need of treatment, only supportive treatment that is loss of vomiting and diarrhea. There will be a loss of fluid and electrolyte that you have to manage. Okay, but there is no need of antibiotics actually because the, these are ineffective against the toxin. In this way, we can manage the bacillus species. There are the two species, bacillus anthracis and bacillus cereus. Bacillus cereus is responsible for food poisoning. The symptoms are immediate nausea and vomiting and later 8 to 18 hours, they develop non-bloody watery diarrhea. That you have to remember when you are talking about the pulmonary uh, anthrax, this is cutaneous and pulmonary. Pulmonary is a severe one because these are mainly used for the bio weapon and they can be used as a bio weapon and that is important that makes it high yield so it develops flu-like syndrome fever pulmonary hemorrhage mediastinitis and shock and patient may die cutaneous interest doesn't leave cause death so that is not very much important only the thing is that their images sometimes can be put and then they can be asked you in the reference of the image so you can if you see your cutaneous anthrax there will be the black scar surrounding intimatus and that is the cutaneous anthrax if you have any problem, if you have any question, you can you can ask me in the link below and I will try to answer you in the next video or I try to answer you below itself. Thank you.